Okay. Yeah. So here's the correct Lewis structure for carbonate. Um, but we need to know how to draw out the orbitals first. And so there are two P's. How are the two P's? Where are they? How are they arranged? One in the plane and one yeah, out of the plane. And so you, you can draw the one in the plane easily, like this. This looks like two orbitals, but it isn't. It's just one P. Now how many orbitals do I have shown here? One, two, three. And the fourth orbital is going to be this is the other P. And so you, you want to make sure you have this down. Then comes SP2, top, side, then comes SP3, then comes SP3D, and then comes SP3 D2. You need to be able to draw out those. And so you can almost imagine, I mean, if you know what they look like, then this is obviously going to be SP2, SP2. one, two, three, trigonal planar, and one P. Do you care about the, like, one-third bonds, like, when assigning the... No, I, uh, this is the reason why I asked you to do one resonance structure, um, not the hybrid. Um, to, to make your life easier. If you started doing the one-third, one and one-third bonds, uh, you're gonna... That's actually easy. Hmm? That's actually easier. The, the hybrid's easier? The hybrid's easier, but the problem is, is how do you do a one-third bond here, a one-third bond here, and a one-third bond it here? It's so fast that it looks like it's you know, double bonded on uh, it doesn't rotate, it just stays yeah. as in one position. Mm -hmm. And so, in other words, do you hybridize this one as sp2 or do you hybridize it as sp3 or somewhere between sp2 and sp3? Yeah. You know, that's where it makes it harder, you know, because what is the hybridization? This one doesn't change, this one stays. You know. But what happens is the pi electron density spreads out, and so there's a lot of p character here, unhybridized. So approaches more SP2 hybridization. But that's more complicated. And so we'll just pick one. And for me, it's more complicated. You know. So we'll pick one. Because you know what I said about overlapping more than one? You know, if we were to do the resonance hybrid like this, let me just talk about it. Where we got pi, this is pi bonding density in all three oxygen bonds. And then we have one p orbital. Do you see this is top view? So this is going to be a p orbital here. And so what is it overlapping here? What kind of pp pi bond do I have here? Well, then, you know, I need some kind of unhybridized p orbital here, unhybridized p orbital here, and unhybridized p orbital here. And then what, I, what I'm doing here is this. Usually we have one atomic orbital, one atomic orbital that makes a bond, right? But in this case, what's happening is the pi bonding electron density is just being spread out over all this. And so we have a situation where... So we just mark on the oxygen that it's one third P, one third P? No, it's not like that. It's a little bit different. Um, So, uh, you know, we'll talk a little bit more. And so just pick one of these and then we'll do it. In organic chemistry, you know, they do this. This is a way we can visualize multiple bonds and resonance. Let's see.
So we have the same situation here. You know, we've got a PP pi bond here, then PP pi bond here, and PP pi bond here. And so ultimately what's going to happen is that we're going to get PP, or the pi bonding electrons are going to spread out over all the bonds. And so it's going to look like this here. This is ozone. Same thing happens in ozone. Let's talk about this. This is benzene. So benzene has two resonance forms. You see the double bond, how it switches positions? Well, it turns out all these are sp2 hybridized. But since they're all sp2, the p orbitals are all lined up like this. And so here we have the p orbitals localized here. But right here, there's two p orbitals, and they're in the same orientation. We're looking top view at all of them. Do you see that? And so it turns out all the p orbitals are sticking straight in and out of the board like this. Since they're all aligned like this, then what can happen is the electron density can spread out over all the p orbitals. Yeah. This is the way we show it. Here's the sigma bonding framework. This is a sp2, sp2 sigmas. And all the p orbitals are lined up. So originally the bond was here, here, and here. Well, in the hybrid, the bonds are spread out. And so do you see the alignment? The alignment's perfect. We can spread it all out like this in the ring. And so each bond turns out to be a one and a half bond. Same thing happens here. This is ozone here. So this is sp2 oxygen, this is sp3 oxygen, and then it flips. Now this is sp2, this is sp3. And so sp3, you know, sp3, does it have an unhybridized p? No. And so this is what happens with oxygen in ozone. And so this is why it's a little bit more complex. What happens is this oxygen is sp2 for sure, but this oxygen should be SP3, but it's kept at SP2 hybridization. The reason it's kept at SP2 hybridization is so that we can align the P orbitals, and that has a stabilizing effect. And so SP2 is not the best for repulsions for four sets of electrons, right? But you throw in one lone pair into a P orbital that sticks straight out, and then what can happen is the electron density can get delocalized over all the bonds. And so what we're doing is we're, we're forcing this from an sp3 to an sp2. And when we do that, then it's going to look like this. Here's this oxygen here. We have a lone pair in the plane like this. And then we're going to have one lone pair that's in the p orbital like this. Here. Well, this middle oxygen, what is the hybridization on the middle oxygen? SP2. This left oxygen, I'm looking at this structure, this left oxygen is going to be SP2. And so this is the situation that we have going down here, is this. Normally the pi bond is between these two. And so let's go ahead and do it using arrow. And so normally we have a pi bond here that's one electron here in this p orbital and one electron here in this p orbital. Now this p orbital here is going to be filled with two electrons or a lone pair. But now that the p orbitals are all lined up, what we're going to do is we're going to spread out all four electrons densities worth over the network of p orbitals here. 
Does that make sense? And so this is what we get here. We spread out all the pi bonding <laughs> electron density over the p orbitals. So ozones. Well, anyway, going back to carbonate, uh, just keep going with carbonate. See what you get. Can you figure it out, carbonate, using one of the resonance forms? Hmm? Or have you already figured it out, or you haven't figured it out yet? No? You have something? All right, let's stop here, and I'll, I'll talk about it. And so we know car carbon's going to be sp2. This top oxygen, what did you do? SP2. SP2? Because I picked the, this one. Okay, these oxygens are? SP3. So here we're going to have a sp3, sp2 sigma, sp3, sp2 sigma, sp2, sp2 sigma, and a pp pi. This is the top view. We got a p orbital stuck here, p orbital, p orbital stuck here, and then we got the pp pi bond like this. And so we got. Now, we would do the orbital energy level diagrams, right? Carbon's sp2, one, two, three, four. What's coming into carbon? And so we'll label the oxygens. Label this oxygen one. Oxygen one comes in here and does an sp2, sp2 sigma and a P, it's oxygen one, P pi, this is sigma, that's a pi. And then we have oxygen two and oxygen three. Oxygen two comes in and does an sp3 sigma, and oxygen three comes in and does an sp3 sigma. This is for the central atom, the carbon. Okay, are we good? Now, we know that this structure isn't 100% accurate, right? What would be much more accurate is the resonance hybrid. When we do the resonance hybrid structure, it looks like this, with one and one third bond each. And then oxygen is going to have two fixed lone pair and then a floating lone pair. Two fixed lone pairs. And then a floating lone pair. In that case, will we have uh, multiple pi bonds between each of the oxygen? Or okay. In this case, well, let's first figure out the hybridization. The middle carbon is what hybridized? SP2. What about this one, though? SP2. Well, if it's SP2, what, what about this extra electron density? And so this should be SP3, right? Technically, this should be sp3 because there's additional electron density. Okay. 
but you know in order to make it work what we're going to do is we're going to force this to be not sp3 hybridized we're going to force it to be sp2 the reason we're going to force it even though it should be sp3 the reason we're going to force it into sp2 is so that all the p orbitals kind of line up and then we could spread this this would go on the p orbital this would go on the p orbital and this would go on the p orbital and then we have this extra electron density here going in so does that make sense But you aren't going to have to do it. You aren't going to have to do it for the hybrid. You will have to do it for one of the resonance forms. Okay, that's it. You will have to do the energy level diagram um, for the central atom, which would be carbon here. All the central atoms. The terminal atoms I probably aren't going to probably not going to have you do it, even though it shouldn't be hard to do. All right, you want to try another one, or? <laughs> You're good? Yeah. All right, let's move on. move on to um, this. What we've been doing is valence bond theory. Valence bond theory, a bond is formed by the overlap of atomic orbitals. The atomic orbitals could be hybridized, or unhybridized. Sometimes both, like in the carbon oxygen bond, the sp2, sp2 sigma, in the p, p, pi bond, p orbitals being unhybridized, sp2 would be hybrid orbitals. But you know, what is valence bond theory? Valence bond theory gets its origin from quantum mechanics because that's what we have, orbitals, right? But this turns out to be the light version. This is a quantum mechanics light. Usually when you purchase the light version, you know, it saves you money, right? But it doesn't have the power or the functionality of the full version. The light version is, um, is good for us because did we have to do any calculations? Did we have to use a computer no. to map out the electron density? No. 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 So the light version works very nicely for us. But there's a problem with the light version. The light version is not the full version and um, the implication for that is sometimes this is not accurate an example of this is for O2 valence bond theory VB theory is wrong in other words the electron um, map that we got for O2 earlier today, it's wrong. It's wrong. And so uh, we saw this before. Bohr theory was wrong. What did we do with Bohr theory? I didn't throw it away. Throw it away, yeah. Bohr theory was discarded. And so valence bond theory is wrong. We should discard it, but we don't. Why don't we discard valence bond theory? It, it works okay for most things. You, know, you get a, a fairly decent picture of what's happening with the electron density. But there are a few exceptions that are significant, and O2 is the, the most widely known. Okay, the other problem with valence bond is it doesn't give us energies. No energies.
That means no spectra. Spectra is we don't know what the electron electron transitions if we excite, you know, if the excited states. That kind of stuff. And so what is the quantum mechanics full version called? Exactly, we get electrostatic potential maps from this. The full version for molecules is called molecular orbital theory. Molecular orbital is this. We replace the atomic orbitals with new orbitals called molecular orbitals. very powerful, you know, MO theory is powerful, the full quantum. We can get the spectra, etc. accurate electron density or more accurate electron density maps. But the problem is, is it's complex. It's not easy. And so usually you have to do computational calculations. But what we'll do is um, we can still use some of it. You know, we aren't going to do the complete MO theory, but we could do some of it if we restrict ourselves to diatomic molecules for simple diatomics. We can um, do. some simple predictions. So let's uh, first look at atomic orbitals. Lowest energy atomic orbital is called the 1s atom A. Okay, and let's look at molecular orbitals. If I have a molecule AB, then the lowest energy molecular orbital is called sigma 1s. Okay, after the 1s orbital, we get the 2s orbital. After the sigma 1s orbital for diatomic, then we get the you know, sigma star 1s orbital. Sigma star 1s orbital is interesting because it has a node cutting down the center. After the 2s, then we get the 2p's. These are the three 2p orbitals, right? After the sigma star 1s, then we get something called the sigma 2p. Etc. Etc. And so all we do for molecular orbital is we forget about the atomic orbitals, and then we memorize a new set of orbitals called the molecular orbitals. Molecular orbitals are like atomic orbitals. They can hold two electrons max. The, the difference is they, they span the entire, entire molecule. And so in molecular orbital theory, what is a bond? A bond in molecular orbital theory equals more, we call bonding electron density,
versus anti-bonding electron density. The difference is this. A bonding molecular orbital has electron density that can be found between the two nuclei, here and here. And so we have electron density in the internuclear region, in fact, here. In an anti-bonding electron density, uh, excuse me, uh, anti-bonding orbital, molecular orbital, there's no electron density in, within the internuclear region here, because there's a node. And so essentially the two nuclei see each other and repel. And so this is called anti-bonding. This is, would be a bonding. How about this orbital here? Would this be a bonding orbital or an anti-bonding orbital? Bonding. This is a bonding orbital because here's the two nuclei and we have electron density holding the two nuclei together. Anti-bonding will always have a node between the two nuclei, which means repulsion are going to be significant. And so all we need is more bonding electron density versus anti-bonding, and then we should have a, a stable bond. And so we, from this, we get something called the bond order, the uh, bond order. The bond order is equal to the number of bonding electrons minus the number of anti-bonding electrons. divided by two from bond order. Okay. So let's do some simple uh, MO analysis. Uh, you have a two down there? Yeah. Why? What does that mean? This is just the formula. Oh, divided by two. Yeah, divided oh, by two. Okay. <laughs> okay. So uh, let's look at hydrogen. Let's look at valence bond versus MO. Valence bond theory versus molecular orbital theory. The light version versus the more complete quantum mechanical version. The light version is easy. We got a 1s and a 1s. They overlap. Form a bond because we'll have more electron density between the two nuclei holding it together. In fact, this is a sigma bond. Because there's electron density, or the overlap occurs on, along the internuclear axis, which is here. And so we get an SS sigma bond. In MO theory, we look at H2, and then we the first molecular orbital we have is the sigma 1s. How many electrons does H2 have, valence electron? It's two. And so we fill this. The sigma 1s has a maximum capacity of two electrons. And uh, this would be one molecular orbital. This molecular orbital is big. It spans the entire molecule. But when we look at the map of the electron density, don't they look similar? This is cigar shape. This is kind of cigar shape. Do you see that? A 1s, 1s overlap is going to look similar to a sigma 1s. This is called a sigma because we have electron density in the internuclear axis. Here, th these overlapping orbitals result in a bond. Here, we look. We count the number of bonding electrons, two, minus the anti-bonding electrons. How many anti-bonding electrons do we have? None. Divided by two gives us a bond order of one. A bond order of one we call single bond. Let's do some more exotic species. Let's try to knock off one of the electrons off an H2. And so we'll try H2 plus. H2 plus can be thought of in valence bond theory as a hydrogen atom bonding to a hydrogen ion. Will that happen? 
so we bring these two, we get overlapping, but there, in this overlapping region, there's only one electron. And we form H2 plus. Is that okay? It turns out, yeah, you know, we aren't going to have as much electron density here, half as much. But as long as we have some electron density here, it should hold the two nuclei together. So H2 plus looks okay. In MO theory, we see the same thing. In MO, we have the sigma 1s orbital. In H2 plus, it only has one electron, so we put one electron in that. And so the picture comes out similar. to valence bond. This is one electron holding the two nuclei together. And the bond should be weak, shouldn't it? What is the bond order? Yeah, one minus zero divided by two, which is one half. Bond order is one half. So it's like a half a bond. How about H2 minus? H2 minus. H2 minus can be thought of as taking a hydrogen atom and um, a hydride. A hydride. Hydride is going to have a filled um, valence shell. Yes. So will these bond in valence bond theory? Yeah. I don't know. No. No. Too many electrons. Right? You see it? Too many electrons. It's not going to bond. But H2 minus exists. So valence bond fails here, but MO theory, what would H2 minus look like? And so we have a sigma 1s. The sigma 1s is filled with two electrons. But we have altogether three electrons. And so where does the third electron go? J star. Yep, in the sigma star 1s. So the sigma star 1s, I'm going to draw it on the same molecule here. It looks like this. This would be a sigma star, where we have the node you know, cutting down the center. And that's going to have, the sigma star 1s will have one electron here. And so is there any bond order? So let's calculate the bond order. Bond order is 2 bonding minus 1 antibonding divided by 2 gives me a bond order of 1 half. And so according to MO theory, H2 minus should exist with a bond order of 1 half. Now how is electron density arranged? Well, all three electrons aren't in the cigar shape here. The third electron actually goes into the antibonding orbital. So if I'm looking at two hydrogen atoms here. I have electron density in the sigma 1s, this. And that holds things together. Right? And then I have one electron's worth of density in the sigma star. And that destabilizes things. So one electron's worth of density is not highly dense. And so there's my sigma star, and here's my sigma, and I see I have more electron density in the sigma than in the sigma star, therefore that's going to hold the molecule together. Hmm? Yeah, there's a node, there's a node here for the red, there's a node here between the two lobes. But is that the place where no electron exists? Yes. 
And so I have two electrons in the green and only one electron in the red. Now it's mapped out. Okay, what if there are more electrons in the J star? Will it break? Yeah, let's put, um, let's try to make H2 minus. H2 mi two minus would be, um, H2 two, let's do H2 with a two minus charge. If we do H2 with a two minus charge, that's like taking one hydride and trying to bond it with another hydride. Valence bond says, is this gonna happen? Uh, no. No. No, way too many electrons. Already taking two full orbitals and trying to overlap them to share it more. No, this doesn't happen. What about MO? What does MO say? I think it is because the bonding would be zero. Yes, right. And so if we put a second electron in the antibonding, then the antibonding cancels out the bonding, and that gives us a bond order of zero, which means H2 with a 2 minus is not going to happen. And so both predict the same thing. Well, MO is powerful because we can also get the energies for this. And so when we look at the energies, what's more stable? A sigma 1s or a sigma star 1s? A sigma 1s is more stable. And so here we go. This is hydrogen. This is H2 plus. This is H2 minus. This is H2 2 minus. Okay, how are these MOs um, formed? Uh, well, let's take a look at that. Now, let's, you guys want a break? Yeah. All right, let's take a break. And we'll talk about the MOs. We've got to cover the rest of the MOs, and then we'll look at oxygen, and we'll call it.